Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. It's time for the biggest radio show in the world. Your host this evening is Michael DeMarco, an international personality and pundit. Get ready for off-the-wall entertainment like you've never heard before. The only way to describe it is the biggest radio show in the world. Now, here's the host, Michael DeMarco. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Michael DeMarco, and you have tuned in to the biggest radio show in the world. Uh, thanks for joining me. But along the way, my guest for tonight gave me a call, and we got to shoot the shit a little bit. His name is Daniel Jason Valdez. Uh, that's with an S, not a Z. And uh, he is a, I call him a rapper, but I think he's not really a rapper. He's not really a hip-hop guy. He, he seems, I, I don't know, we have to hear it from him exactly what he is. But uh, quite a story behind his music, quite a cool guy, and uh, some pretty diverse, eclectic uh, stuff that he throws out there. Uh, goes by the name of Dirty D, and actually now the real Dirty D. I welcome to my show, Jason, the real Dirty D Valdez. I'm sorry, Daniel Jason, the real Dirty D Valdez. <laughs> Dirty D, how are you, buddy? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, but uh, I've got you on the show, and, um, you know, actually I had brought you on after I heard you rapping with uh, Inner Groove, Inner. my buddy Evan, uh, Higher than the trees, man. It was good stuff. And I got on the phone afterwards, you know, probably a couple days later with uh, with my buddy Evan. And I said, man, I got to meet this guy. And, uh, of course, we got to start talking. And, you know, I think you're, you're basically, I look at you as a buddy at this particular point, And I wanted to tell your story. But, I appreciate uh, that. For, first of all, all these people intringing on Dirty D, and now you're the real Dirty D. It throws me back to the real Slim Shady and all these things, Marshall Mathers. I, I've got an alternate name for you. Let's start calling you calling you Exxon Valdez. <laughs> That's what everyone says, or Juan Valdez. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Exxon, you know, and I, I, that was not an influence that you had bestowed upon me, so I, I think that would be kind of catchy. You don't have to worry about uh, about any of that. It gives you that sort of a dirty bad boy image, and uh, you got to like that. Um, based on our conversations, there is a little bit of dirty going on there, being a, a rap star, hip-hop star, alternate uh, alternative music type star, whatever it is. Talk to me about the hose. <laughs> about the hose. Um, I, I, for some reason, I attract them. <laughs> well, you guys, I'll tell you what, we're all about self-promotion. you got to get a look at this guy. Young ladies out there, what are you? You're, you look blondish to me. Me? Yeah. Well, blonde, brown, brownish, blue eyes. Dirty blonde. Dirty Blonde, there you go. There's another name, Dirty Blonde. We're going to write that down. We might have to give a web vote on this. <laughs> Dirty Blonde. Okay, very nice. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Now, I mean, I know you've got a, a, a long and confusing past. Um, I wanted to get into your life story, and we've got a song that we're going to premiere probably at the end of the show today. Um, yeah. But uh, let's take it from when you were about seven years old and started to get interested in music. How'd that happen? Um, well, actually, I... Um, I've been around music my whole life. My my real mom, uh, her name is Rose. Ro, her name was Rosemary Levon Murphy. Um, was she used to take me around with her to? Um, she used to have band rehearsals and, and she played tambourine and, and jammed on the guitar a little bit and sang. And cool. uh, so I'd like go to these rehearsals and and uh, I remember it was just so new to me and like hearing hearing that music come out of those those speakers, you know, like. Uh, it, it was just so loud, you know. The vibe, and, and man, the vibe. The vibe, exactly. And it just, it just was like, it just, I fell in love with it, you know. And ever since, like, you know, I, I, I didn't really get into music until, um, me personally, until, well, on a real level, um, until I was probably about twelve or thirteen, mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually. What happened was uh, my mom. She she was uh, strangled. She was murdered. She was strangled to death by um, a, a messed up guy named uh, John Haranzi. Okay, now we're not going to get in trouble for saying that. Now this is substantiated, right? I uh, what substantiated means? <laughs> that means this has been proven. There there's a uh, oh, public yeah, record that this has in proven. fact happened. This is not conjecture. This is nothing that you're accusing. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I, um, 
I, I mean, we just went to court for it. Um, it was a closed case for, for 11 years. And, and why was that? Um, it was because he he was in jail. He was in prison for another um, thing. To, to my knowledge, it was um, he tried taking a swing at police officer or at his probation officer with um, a crowbar, and um, and he was already in, in deep deep stuff. So he uh, ended up putting him in prison for for like ten years for that. And then uh, and then finally, when he he got out, got released for that, they. Uh, they actually grabbed him and and held him in Twin Falls, Idaho, and um, they and and they called me and, and told me that they were going to reopen the case and then see what they could get for for the murder of my of my mom. And uh, so it was it was a long time coming, you know. And uh, uh, there was a long time where I was I was messed up through my, you know, because those those are the most difficult years. Is, is you know your teenagehood and and and. and you you know your youth you need I mean kids need their mother parents, figure you know structure parents yeah exactly and you've got some asshole who just uh, you know basically took your mother's life um, you know I'm reading your bio that was forwarded over to me and um, you know it reads like a book you know yeah. for for basically uh, every dysfunctional youth that as a product of um, you know no parental influence um, you were taken in by another family I take it. Um, actually, um, my, my real dad had, um, full custody of me. Um, he, you know, he, he was a hard, he's a hard worker. He, he, um, he's a laborer and, um, sure. and so he, he, he had, um, custody. Every once in a while I'd go back and forth, um, every other weekend with my mom mm -hmm. when she, when she was here. And, uh, and, you know, those were like some of the best times of my life. And me and her, she, besides being my mom, she was my best friend. You know what I mean? Right. She would tell me everything. We, we would discuss everything, and, and guys she would date. She would ask me, you know, hey, what do you think of this guy? You know, mm -hmm. so wow. I mean, that, that had to be tough. And, and there was a, a series of incidents. I mean, obviously, that uh, a lot of us went through, myself included. You you fought a lot as a kid. Yeah, yeah. I would, <laughs> got in a little, a lot of fights. I, you know, I like because when I was at home, like I don't know. I just I, I was in a home where. Um, you know, I couldn't really express myself um, verbally. You know, right? And and so I you learned, shut I, your I, I mouth when you're talking to me. Yeah, that kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Laborers, go figure. Yeah, Nothing wrong with and, that. Salt and, of the earth, hardworking guys, but not exactly necessarily the most sensitive parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so you know, I I would like. Um, I for I just internalize everything, you know, like my whole youth. Like the, if you can imagine going through some of the deepest, darkest stuff, you know, seeing seeing the craziest stuff as a, as a kid, and then you have to internalize all of that, you know, and and you can't. There's no outlet for that. Right. So that is what actually brought me into the music world because if I didn't have actually, I started with poems, and if I didn't have that, mm -hmm. then that was my structure. You know, if I didn't have that. I, you know, I'd probably be in prison right now. I'd probably be in the loony bin, you know, like I'm sure. So think, you know, like music basically has saved my life. It's, it's, it's my form of expression. Music to me is like, I, I'm so, I'm like, anybody around me will tell you I'm, I'm very pat, I'm a very passionate guy. I'm like the most passionate guy. And to me with music, it's equal to breathing for me, you know, mm -hmm. I live. I live to make music. I live to to do that because if without that, you know, I. I mean, I owe my life to music. So I can appreciate that, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, along with that, though, um, there sort of came a break for you. Obviously, you're still a struggling artist, uh, doing pretty well though in Washington, based on what I understand and what the feedback is uh, to me and my sources. Um, as a product of all of this, it, it did help you with the release, and we've got four your songs tonight. Um, one you had done about your mother, um, you know, who of course was tragically murdered. Uh, Life of a Rose, which we're going to yeah. close the show with. Uh, that's going to be a worldwide premiere. Um, but we've got, uh, I believe, I'm in Love is the first one that I wanted to hear, and the reason that I wanted to hear that one is to keep things a little bit more up-tempo. Obviously, you have to relive the, the dark days every single day, not just on my show. 
Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, let's move on to a little bit more of the bright spots. For, for all you guys out there, I mean, this guy, 